Hello, everybody, and good morning. Make sure that you post a comment to let us know you're here. And then if you're on Facebook, you'll want to click on the highlighted streamyard.com Facebook to give permission for your names to show up so we know who you are because Facebook doesn't allow a third party um, streaming program to show the names. It's just a Facebook thing. So we have to abide by it. So you just have to give permission. But we're going to start today on the matting of the inside of our album. And I do apologize. I'm having a little problems with my beagle. He keeps sticking his head through the fence to get a cat. And if it gets stuck again, I may have to run out there really quick. Hi, Jan. Um, or I'll just mute the camera here for just a minute as I yell at him. Okay, mute is such a wonderful thing. <laughs> so I have to kind of keep an eye on him as we're creating today. And we are going to start, of course, on the left-hand side. And um, one thing I do want to let you know is I used this piece in here and also here. And so this piece I'm going to do last. We're going to see... Um, hi, Pamela. <laughs> Hey, Wilbur's still trying to get his head stuck in the fence, but we're going to do this main part first. So let's get started here with the left-hand side. And if you have your kits, and if you don't have your kits, that's okay. You may be using your own paper. And so I'll be giving the measurements. I'll pop them up here on the screen. But we're going to start with this bottom flap. And then there's going to be some things as we're going along, like this bottom piece that I weight and mat when I have my scraps. So I will point those out to you and then you can go back and decide what you want to mat yours with. What I'm gonna do is, you know, we built the whole inside and so we have this bottom flap that's going to go on the, the book. And we're working on this left hand flap and then the top. So we've already created those pieces and that is what we're going to mat and then put into the book. Clothes pins kind of help on this because as we're matting, um, at, I mean, when we attach it to the chipboard, magnets can help hold that down as we're working. Okay, so if you have that bottom piece, that was the bottom piece with the pocket and the top flap. And for the, I've got the, like I said, the, Sizes for the matting are now going to pop. I'm going to start putting them on the screen. So my pocket matting. And I did use this. This is also the piece that's going to go behind all of this. So let's look at that really quick. This is the flap we're working on now. And the top. I pre-cut mine, but I have not done the inking, and so I'll be doing that. And like I said, the, the matting is up on the camera, and it's two and three eighths by six and a quarter. I just use my sepia; it just goes with everything. Or you can use a black. And I just now, only for the second time, witnessed my neighbor's little cat, cute little fat gray thing, and it's what keeps antagonizing the beagle, Wilbur. Well, he uh, keeps trying to stick his head underneath the fence. So we got to get that fixed this weekend. Because next week I won't be able to chase the little guy. And I'm not happy about it. 
Okay, two and three eighths by six and a quarter. Always do a pre-fit. And we'll put that down. And I just made a mess. Too much glue on the corner. So how's everybody's Friday going? It's here. Hi, Tanya. Tonight, if you are signed up for our Zoom crop, we will be uh, doing that tonight. So I've got a project ready during our Zoom crop. We have a lot of fun. Just a lot of conversation. Nothing really in particular. Everybody talks, shares their what they're doing. And we are going tonight's our Zoom crop. It's fun to work and get your projects done. So we'll be on twice. Well, I, you, if, you're, if you want to buy a Zoom pass, they are on countrycraftcreations.com. And then our Facebook group is where the links are posted to, to the Zoom crops. There's our pocket. Now for the inside, you've got a couple of different watercolor prints. This is the one that has the wording market gather and it has the green on the back. And that is what I put inside of my pocket. And there's your inside matting size right there. It is four by six and a quarter. The mat, uh, hi Karma, because the matting sizes were not on your, your cutout. I mean, your cutting guide. Hi, Vanessa. I don't usually put the sizes of the matting on a cutting guide because it can vary depending on what you cut your or how you alter your pages or how you score them. So always measure. And the more you do that, the more you'll get comfortable with creating. Your own projects. Okay. So see, it's only four inches. We don't have to go all the way down. We don't want to waste that paper. One thing I did not grab too is my coordinating colors. I don't, I think I have them behind me though. And the coordinating color. So this will flip down. Um, we have a one inch. This isn't going to be on the screen. It's a one inch by six and a quarter. And if you remember, <clears throat> our first piece was, <clears throat> excuse me, our first, uh, Oh, no, I never had given you this. This was the whole size is five and three eighths. So I would be cutting my piece five and three eighths by six and a quarter. But because I have a one inch here. And then I want a space the bottom. If you want to cut your orange now and I'm going to grab mine, it's going to be three and a quarter. Because we want that one inch. Space. I don't want to tell you wrong, so hold on. Five and three eighths minus one is four and three eighths minus that space, so four and an eighth by six and a quarter. And mine might be a little different color. Let's see. This is the this is the orange one in your kit. Again, I'm going to cut it four. Four and an eight by six and a quarter. And when we, <clears throat> darn, allergies, when we have our scraps. It's down. So this sits at the bottom with the tab at the top. Now when I cut my scraps, then I can measure this again. Because it may be a little hair over one. Just depends on the space that you want between. And I do always tell you to measure. But we'll wait until we get some scraps. So we don't cut into a full sheet of cardstock. 
So four and one eighth by six and a quarter is my orange matting. And that will fit a nice four by six photo. I have to tell you something funny. We ordered the Christmas cards really early for the business, for Country Craft Creations. And, of course, yes, Wilbur's on them. So we get our Christmas cards, and somebody's stolen the Christmas cards out of the box, but they sent us the envelopes. <laughs> you can tell the envelope was broke open. So somewhere out in Never Neverville, there's 500 Wilbur Christmas cards floating around. And we don't know who on earth would want Wilbur Christmas cards if they don't have a business with Wilbur. I just thought that was funny this morning when that happened. The box showed and somebody had stolen the invitations. Yeah, it's not freezing here, but it's pretty cool. So there's my bottom flap. This, very simple to add on later. So I'm going to add this to our book now. And when you add it to this left-hand side, I bring it to this outside edge. So that I stay away from my hinge. Making sure it's flush. This is where I mentioned clothes pins. On these corners for just a minute. Hi, Bonnie. How is it up there in snowy Canada? I will be putting these back on, so don't, I don't want them to go far, but I also don't want glue stuck here. So I want to make sure I've cleaned it up first, and then I'm going to add my clothespins while we're working on the top. Set that aside. And the top. Now, for the top, I haven't quite cut all the pieces. Some, you'll see why. So, our top. And this one, again, I will put the measurement up. But it comes from um, your cut-apart. Now, there's a cut-apart on your 4 by 6 sheets. So, I cut it. I just cut it out itself. And it's going, it's going to be the four by six. And then you're going to put it in your cutter and cut it down from the top to three and seven eighths. And then your sides, three and seven eighths. I wanted that hello fall to show. And it was such a decorated four by six. And unless you put a picture on the back, I was kind of like, well, there's nothing I can really do on the front. Here, I can definitely journal. These at least have sayings. And so that one I went with. Then we have coordinating colors on the back that we haven't cut yet. So I went ahead and I won't cover these until I get those scraps. But again, same size, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. I have these cut and, and all the rest of this. So it's just these pieces with the coordinating. Really in my house, I'm here in Utah, it's 68 and I think it's, I think it's perfect. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with this flap with the cut apart that was cut at three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths to get your hello fall from that cut apart. And then remember, next Friday, well, there'll be a live on Authentic Wednesday, but there won't be. And he lives on Friday, and then we'll see. I'm having that foot I broke actually rebroke. So they're going to fix it while I have a little time, and I will keep you guys up to date whether I'll be able to go live or not after that. But I'll still be around. Now, again, the back side will be 
a green three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths coordinating coordinating so i'm not going to cut those yet but this is four by five and you're going to just take your ruler and measure everywhere that you want to put your matting but it's four and a half because we had the so it'd be four and three eighths by three and seven eighths make sure again you measure same with the back now for your right hand side from the same piece that we cut the bottom and for our bottom flap i cut my um next piece from and this one is the three and three eighths by three and seven eighths and you want to always go directional so three and three eighths it's a three and seven inches long and three and three eighths wide again make sure that you check your um make sure you check your um directionals gosh can't talk this morning <laughs> and i need to ink my corners and i'm just checking to see what's happening on in the warehouse sorry See what the warehouse wants. I can go ahead and put this down. Don't forget, <clears throat> if you're on Facebook, you need to give StreamYard permission so we see who you are because your name, um, it won't let your name show up. I know, I know somebody just said, I've missed being here. It's been a long time. Well, we've missed you too, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Make sure you do give StreamYard permission. Now, the back side, I went with the green, which is just the back side of the same paper, three and three eighths by three and seven eighths. Nice spot for a three by three photo. Oh, I put the glue on the wrong side. Well, guess what? Watch what side you're putting the glue down in. I looked up to make sure Wilbur wasn't stuck in the fence again. So that's okay. Still be a great photo spot, right? Oh, hi, Catherine. There you go. Now, I'm, now I can see it. Okay, now this next section is the three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And what I did is I used the three by four cut aparts. And again, from my paper, I just cut out 
the two. I didn't want to, you know, get in here and cut too much up yet. So I cut them right from the top. And the next, and oh, you're going to cut these down just a little bit. Let me open my book. So you're going to want to cut them down to three and three and seven eighths long, two and seven eighths wide, so that it fits in that spot. And then I did the same with the, the pumpkin leaves saying, I love this. Good. Maybe Wilbur will now come in. Wilbur will now come in and go to sleep. You gotta get something done with that vinyl fence so he stops sticking his head in there and gets it stuck. I'm gonna leave him there one day. No, I wouldn't do that. But he's just like a two-year-old. Okay, put that one. Down. Oh, smear me. It was on my finger. The pumpkins for the back side love the orange so bright and pretty and I'll show you on the finished album something that I wanted to show you well, what are you doing So I put the green here, so it kind of brought the green over. And then the leaves, because I used the green here, but um, that's what that flap looks like. And then we're going to have the green on the back side here and some leaves on this side. Um, the finished, there's not a full picture, but you can go on my YouTube and see the walkthrough. There is a walkthrough of the finished project. Project. You just have to um, dig through the YouTube. Okay, green is going to go here. And I had cut mine just a little bit short on accident. Didn't want to waste it. So I didn't put the measurement up on this one. But it should be, mine is just short six and a quarter. Uh, by three and seven eighths. This is going on the back side. So, you know, check your fit. Six and a quarter was a little bit more. If it was a better fit and I cut mine short. So just make sure you measure first. So that's going on the back. The green is going on the front. And if you just joined us, I had mentioned these smaller flaps are a solid so they will be covered once I get more of my papers cut and the scraps I always do the backs and smaller flaps like that after I've done my scraps my main cutting and then you don't have to cut into a paper and accidentally not have enough and again a four by six photo it's perfect. So how are you doing, Carolyn? I'm glad you're with us. Yeah, and the video, so when this video is done today on Facebook in the Units tab, I will get all the videos to this in the Units tab so that you can follow along without having to dig through YouTube and I didn't ink those edges I didn't want to smear it on the lighter green and I'm not worried this guy's not really directional but it is the back side of the watercolor looking one and we did just get in a 
big new shipment. I had to get more of this before it's gone. This is going to be, I think, a fabulous paper for especially Thanksgiving photos coming up. Thanksgiving place cards. Um, we always do play, place cards for the family members because then they keep them. And I put their pictures on them. I'm going to use this paper. It's perfect. Okay. Tab to the back. I'm just going to kind of close everything here. And reburnish our flap. And trim my corners. And we're going to put this on our book. My book's upside down, and this is going to sit right on the top. And this is dry. Flush with the outside. And then you want to get it even so that they match. Flaps. Whoops. down a little bit just be gentle till it dries okay now I'm going to grab my chipboards and the sticker sheet Now, down here, I did some piecing, and let me find something here. There is a possibility. Huh. I hope we didn't, but there is a possibility we gave you the wrong two boards. We gave you the um, phrases instead of the accents. I mean, accents instead of the phrases, but they both work. So, I grabbed a kit and it had this one very similar, and it's fine. But, this is what's going to go right here. And then I did some pumpkin at the bottom with the sticker sheet. So I started with the pumpkin that has the till at the bottom. And then the orange pumpkin right here. Two of those. Oh, okay. And I'm going to attach it to make this layered. Kind of a layered look. I didn't stick a lot up on foam dots. Oh, it's because with folios, with the flips and flaps, they tend to get stuck on each other. And if you notice the new cut aparts, the chipboard ones do not have adhesive in the back. And I'm really glad. I'm going to go about halfway. And they did that because they can now make them right here in Utah. And the adhesive, I took it off most of the time anyway. Let's hold that. So it'll stick up. And then I took that orange 4x6, which is on your cut of parts. It's the one at the bottom. Of the one we use for the flap and I just matted on the black 
it's going to hold that. This was an extra, and I actually intended to use it. I need to just go ahead and mat it. And then one of your graphic 45 tags, which I still have to get my paper on, will sit in there, and that's what will hold your top flap closed. Go ahead and take our clothespins off. And then again, I used a chipboard here at the top. And sorry, but we have Wilbur making lots of noise. And I'm going to go with, uh, these are a little bit hard. Just in case, for some reason, we had, you got a kit that maybe had the phrases instead of the accents. Oh, yeah, I, I'm really happy with them. Um, I'm going to use this on the front. There was a little banner. If you have the other chipboards, I'm hoping that maybe I just grabbed these and wasn't paying attention. And they, um, the other chipboards have chipboard banners, but everything in this line is so fabulous that it doesn't really matter. They all go together well. But I have it stick out a little bit. I actually like this frame better. And it's kind of my finger grab. Okay. So, I'm going to open this up. Our inside, hopefully we'll measure 6 and 3 eighths by 8 and 7 eighths. And that's what I did cut the black and white it's six and three eighths by eight and seven eighths but sometimes your flaps will stop that so just measure make sure it will close make sure it does close for you and then if you're not sure you can trim I am going to trim mine just a hair more I don't want it to get mangled when we close the book I just took a 16th inch off the sides and off the length. Better fit. Bonnie, I think without the sticky on the back, I think they're stronger. Um, all the chipboards now. The only problem with some of the new printing I've noticed is the sticker sheet. You do have to be a little extra careful. I had some that did not were not cut all the way through, and that does happen because of the dye that cuts those. So always, always carefully pull off the stickers. They're doing a lot of changes with all these companies to to bring our printing, their printing here, which means we have to sacrifice a few things and hey that's okay just so we have our paper to play with okay now we can cover all those flaps I know my grandson that's in fourth, fifth grade, I can't remember if he's fourth or fifth, had his first Halloween party. One of the girls in the class, they had all the kids invited. So I've already got Halloween pictures for the right-hand side, and I'm pretty excited. And I'm going to use this side for Thanksgiving. Okay, that's that side finished. I'm just using the flaps from, I mean, the tags 
from that first album to put in here just to hold everything down and your tag will be heavier and your but your tags are craft color which or no they're I can't remember if they're craft or black in your kits I think they're black but it holds it nice and shut and so now we need to do our pages And if you remember, we didn't uh, put them on the hinges because we need to map the back first, which we'll do. We're going to map the back, put our pages on, and then we'll get that matting done. So with your book, we need to measure this inside portion. And... I'm going to cut mine six and seven eighths to start by eight and seven eighths. And then we're going to go with the orange. Um, I'm going to, I cut mine at eight and seven eighths first. So I cut my length. So I had this bottom piece. So I cut that at eight and seven eighths. And then I cut it at six and seven eighths. Now what I'm going to do here is on this piece, it's going to go here. So this would be just a hair different. I'm going to have a, a piece from the opposite side right there. Where on the other one, I did it solid. No, I didn't. I actually pieced it and then I put a stripe at the bottom. So you can do it either way. I pieced it and brought a stripe in the center. But this time, oh, I've, I've, got, I've got my... Uh, Catherine, I have my clock set for that because I need to do the same thing, but I'm going to use the leaves. So don't cut into those, but let's go ahead and put our paper down. Well, if you're not getting notifications, you might need to check your settings and then click on because there's constant updates and changes. Settings get changed with Facebook. Who knows? I'm going to cut this a hair short. And hi, Donis. I'm really hoping, hoping, hoping Facebook. I don't know. I was able to change back to the normal way today. I really don't like the new format. Does anybody else like the new format? It let me change for 24 hours. I don't know why they're insisting on changing the format. It's big. It's kind of in your face. Can't find nothing. After we get this down, we need to fit the hinges. So we've made the hinges, we've made the pages. And you should have those ready to go.
edges are down. Okay, hinges. And three pages. Um, what is the measurements for what? For this paper? This paper is six and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths if you're cutting the matting. Angela, I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but okay. Our hinges will sit directly on top of here. I need to erase that. That was the size of our paper. And if you need to go back for any of the measurements, there's two other tutorials on YouTube that you can follow to create the whole folio. Now, we want to decide where the hinges are going to go. But you have to make sure your page. So you don't want to clear over here and then your page hits the spine piece. So just lay your page on top of one of the hinges, literally on top of one of the hinges. And that's going to decide your placement. And I will mark mine and then I, I will go ahead and give you measurements. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. So my hinges are going to sit a half inch in from this side, half inch in. So I'm just going to mark this spot where it's going to sit to the right hand side and then the bottom. And that will give me a half inch on this side and make room on this side for my pages. So you only have two surfaces on the back here that need adhesive. Oh, sorry, that is that was for an old matting we did. Let me remove that. Okay, that was for matting that we just finished on the left-hand side. So I want one edge. To my right-hand matting, I mean marking, and then I'll match the bottom. Because it's glue, I'm going to hold it for just a moment. I don't want it to slide around. That was for over here. knocked us out of the there we go <laughs> I knocked myself out of the filming room okay.
Okay, once you feel it's secure and you've got you've got your hinges completely down. Then we can add our pages. I do add the pages first. Let me show you. Uh, page one, we made the little pocket which will mat and then we'll put it on. Then we have a pocket that sit on sits on top of the matting. And we'll, of course, mat these and then put them on our book and then mat. The back is just straightforward matting. And this was the double flap we created. I'm going to put you, I'm going to mute it for a minute if you're getting caught up so I can just answer this quick question for someone. Okay, sorry about that, guys. You know, Fridays, we're still shipping, so the warehouse had a question. Okay, a mini album has hinges. A folio usually doesn't. This is a folio. Um, you can call it, actually, I don't, you can call them anything. I think usually a folio has, to me, a folio is made out of cardstock. Everybody has has a different name um okay you're gonna see that i'm butting this right up to the hinge my page and it's going to actually just lay down right on top of your page this is going to fold over uh no you didn't get kicked out I knocked this off the screen and I'm going to add my adhesive to the top of my hinge. Line it up to the bottom, top and bottom. Your hinge is the same size as your page. Fold that over. Um, Brandon, I think, yeah, your kid is on the way. Um, There's something I was going to show you. I'll leave it open. Can't remember. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I was looking to see. Oh, that's what I was going to do. The top of your pages are open. I did not put anything in the top of these pages, but I want to grab this because I want to show you something. This is going to fall all the way in your graphic 45 tag. But if you wanted to add more graphic 45 tags, this is something I like to do. And I've done it um, in, I did it in another tutorial. But let's go ahead and get that glue spread around. So if you want to use a graphic 45 tag, and it's a short one, you don't want it to go to the bottom. What I do, and I'm going to mark it because I am going to put some tags in here. Um, I found so many new uses for these graphic 45 tags in our albums, and it's such a great way to make inserts without using your cardstock, but we don't want it to go all the way down. So I'm going to close this up 
And that's the nice thing too. You can adjust the size of your pages this way. If you want, I need to keep that out so we can measure all of our pages. And I, like I said, I don't want it to fall. So I'm going to add adhesive here on my hinge at the top. Then I'm going to go along the bottom and I'm going to go across my mark and I'm going to close this up. There's no need to have it open. I don't want to lose my tag down in there and have to dig for it and rip my page. I'm going to fold it over. And not only do I have complete side of my page, but I can adjust it as we're, see, I need to kind of reburnish that score line to make it lay flat. Glue needs to be spread around. Now I'm going to push it to the other side. I should have done that before this point, but I didn't because it was a little stiff. A little more adhesive down there. Now I've got a nice area for a photo behind my pictures, but let's hold this down for just a minute. Okay. Okay, the bottom is closed, and I've got glue everywhere. Oh. All over my fingers. Okay, next page. Same thing, we're going to open it. I'm going to match it to the bottom of the back page. And we're going to just repeat the same thing. Now, see, I got my papers a little off. And that's okay. Because, I mean, when I say off, I've got them off of, of the hinge. It's a little longer. I went to the bottom. But I'm still going to match it to the bottom page because I want it to be straight with the pages. The hinges aren't going to show, so I don't care. If it's a little off on the inside of this hinge. Okay. But one thing we're going to do before we do add that on, we're going to fold it backwards. I should have done that with that, but I got busy talking because we want to, we want it to be loose. And since I know I want my tag in there, I, I didn't put the tags in your kits. This is only if you want to do it. I have, I wanted to show you this way. So now, oh. I will be adding tags to the center. But you have tags in your kit for your pockets. Close that up. See, it turns much better when we take the time to correct that. And our last page, same way. Some days I'm messier with glue than others. Today is a messy glue day. 
Oh, see, and I had to open the windows, Carol, down here in Hooper, because it's getting too warm. So whatever you want for a tag, just measure or leave it open, and you can use your scraps of cardstock and just make a long tag. And just close that right up. Then it should look just like that with that cascade look, kind of like a waterfall. So when I take that tag, see, it doesn't fall in. That's one of the nice things about doing your pages like this. And then let's just take the time to go back over them. Really burnish them, burnish them down. I need to glue that. See, that did not get glued down. So it, oh yeah, all the way down. Needs some more adhesive. And we do cover, I'm covering the inside there. So I've got some glue smooshing there, but it's okay. Because the cardstock in the center will definitely hide that. Let's start with the first page. Um, the first page has that half pocket that we created so the front of page one remember we we have the one inch that's going to hook onto our page and then the pocket and then the back so look for your plaid right here and we're going to cut the pocket piece and our pocket the top of our pocket is four inches so we're going to cut three and seven eighths by four and seven eighths since this isn't a directional paper and I want to you know you I don't want to just waste I'm going to go I'm going to turn it this way with the header at the top. I'm going to cut three and seven eighths and then I'll turn it and I'll cut my four and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut the smallest first. And have that piece with you. And the leaves are going to go on the front of that pocket flap or the front of the, the pocket itself. And see, this is the piece that we have left. I'm just going to cut about an inch and a half. And it's going to be the same width, four and seven eighths. But always cut your small one first. We don't need it to go way down in the pocket. And it will be the plaid. Okay, let's go ahead and ink those.
ink from the back so I don't smear the front. Well, with it getting cold, and if you're keeping your cardstock anywhere near your heater, don't forget it's winter time. Um, especially your black cardstock space heaters will dry out cardstock, especially here in Utah, um, Arizona. Those dry climates. Make sure you're not keeping if you are using. A space heater and I do down in my craft room but I have moved my cardstock oh to the other side of the room because last year especially your black it's just the pigmentation I was told by the mill will dry out and you'll have it's not like really a cracking it's a peeling the mills for paper are back east where it's moist and then it comes to our dry climates and then you add a space heater and it makes it even worse. But I know my studio gets a little chilly too. Okay, there's the front. Now for the back, I use the plaid. I'm just going to use a piece at the top and then I used green at the bottom. And if you have the kit, you would have had let me get the green. You'll have the green or a green in your kit. It is um, the kit. Uh, Denise, it's no longer on the website. I have to see if we have enough to uh, make. I think we do. We had a big shipment. So if I could make more kits then I will get that on the website today. If not, you can follow along for sure with your, you know, your own paper. But a kit is nice. So I'm going to cut my green. I'm going to cut a one inch strip for the bottom. Whoops. And because we already know the width, Oh, no, we don't. Let me show you when you turn it this way. So we've got a little bit of a different um, width for the back. So it's going to be four and five eighths. Right after we're done with the live, I will be going out to the warehouse and I will check and see what is left so I can create. This is a Halloween fall. So one side is Halloween and one side is fall. I could not decide, but then I figured we don't really do a lot of fall photos of the grandkids and we don't do a lot of Halloween, but we do some, not enough to fill up a full album. So I thought how perfect, best of both worlds. So this is going to go at the bottom, my hinge is to the right. And then we need to fill the space right here with this. I want to measure three and seven eighths by four and five eighths. I lost my paper. How do you lose paper so quick? There it is. Cut your smallest piece first at three and seven eighths. And four and five eighths. And keep all your bits and pieces. And check your fit. I don't like mine to sit right at the bottom. So I'm going to take um, an eighth of this off. 
Hi, Marie. Marie, I really read that wrong. I just glanced up. Okay, you're popping in. Hi. So how you doing? How's your little boy? Um, I want that black space at the bottom. Let's go ahead and ink our edges. And I, one thing about pockets and flips and flaps, they don't have to always be filled up with tags or mats. A lot of times I like these because I put my loose pictures in them. So I put the photos in here until I can get back and um, make them. Now we're going to put this first flap on the front of our page. So this just sits and you can, you can decide, you know, where you want it. If you don't want it at the bottom, it can go towards the top. I mean, the center, go towards the bottom. That's there. I think at the bottom, I'm just eyeballing the center, but I did the one inch because I do want to make sure it's secure under the paper. And I'm not putting it right at the edge. I'm bringing it in I got just a hair so that, see, I have room to flip it open. Now we can go ahead and mat our page. So I used the wording. And a lot of you may cringe because it is the back of your cut aparts. And you'll see that I only use, I use the gather. So what that means is everything on this side is what I basically used. But I, and I cut it. Let me show you because I didn't want to lose these. But I didn't care about losing these. So I cut we're going to cut this right off. I'm going to do it with my bigger cutter. See? Then I used a coordinating at the bottom. Now your page, when you measure it, is five and a half. Oops, no, it's five. So we want to cut this down to four and seven eighths. Now you should have that left. And then I did the coordinating color here at the bottom, which is the burgundy. And we'll we'll match that. I mean, we'll measure that in just a second. So that we're not sitting, you know, all day long. We may only get the fall done. I'm going to go till one o'clock on this live. Now, if for some reason we don't get the Halloween side done, whoops, I'm going to do that Saturday morning with you. Because I know a lot of you sitting for a long time. And that's what happened to me last week when we were doing a special virtual the retreat. Uh, it killed my back. So I don't want to sit here. And I know you don't want to sit here for three hours. So I figured two hours will be long enough. We'll go until one. And we'll get pretty much, I'm hoping we'll get all these pages, we'll get all these pages done for sure. And then we will meet back here on Saturday morning and just do our Halloween side. And you can always look online too if you want to work ahead or if you're using a different collection you may not even want um, or worry about the rest of the matting. 
Okay, measure the bottom. Mine's going to be one and three fourths by four and seven eighths. I'm going to use the rest color at the bottom. Four and seven eighths. Let's see how that's going to fit. Fits good. Then you can go ahead and ink and just put that down. And sticker sheet. I use the fruit basket. Okay. Like I said you kind of have to. There we go. They are nice and sticky. I still use my glue though to make them permanent. Now, one thing I want to do before we go any further, we're not matting the outside, but I want to show you, if you have the brown ribbon, this is where I attached the brown ribbon to the outside, and it will tie. And because I tend to forget things, I want to go ahead and add this right now, and I'll tell you... Um, how much I've used so it does attach to the back side that way it didn't pull up this paper I didn't want it ruining my paper this by doing it from the outside and will keep you from tearing paper and it will be perfect for keeping your page closed so I'm going to go with two pieces that are 19 inches and you'll have plenty in the kit. But if you're not using the kit, then go ahead and just cut uh, two 19 inch pieces or 138 inch. I'm going to turn this to the back and add a piece of score tape to the center. I'm just kind of eyeballing. Now, I'm not going to throw that away because I don't want it to be all sticky. So I'm just going to put that back on top. And bring that back so I have kind of a, a reference where to put this one. So what did I do? I just threw it in the garbage. Told myself not to. There goes Wilbur. You know, that little cat is going to be the death of him. I'm 
and that is a little long but I'm not going to cut it till we're done because this is going to bulk up but at least now that won't be forgetting gotten and I did use the the darker brown you'll have a light brown also so you can choose which one you want to use that's in the kit now for the back we need to mount the back page and then we're going to put that pocket down that we made there it is and this will sit right on top of the page and that's where that gather cut apart I put goes so your page that you want to use here if you want to if you're doing exactly is leaves and I'm going to cut a piece that's four and seven eighths oh, and I do want to show you something as you go along and mat your page the weight okay the weight of all the flips and flaps see it'll start laying it lays just fine because of the weight of the cartabella paper which is so awesome and the full length so our page was eight inches i believe yes seven and seven eight Now, the back side with the pies, which is my absolute favorite page of this paper, um, that's going to be on our pocket. So let's go ahead and put down the matting for the page. Oh, well, you know, this is such a cute little cat next door. And with it getting cold it sits on the warehouse deck which is just fine but the fence is between Wilbur and the cat and I think the cat knows it's driving him crazy but I'm not going to make the cat leave Wilbur needs to just learn to deal with it In fact, when we brought him home, I had a cat. I had two cats. They were old. Um, we've lost them, but years ago. But he, it's not like he doesn't know what a kitty is. But he certainly acts like it. Okay. Now our pocket. Let's go ahead and make the pocket. Again, it didn't matter. I didn't have to do any fitting because it sits right on top of our page and it will hold um, the cut apart. So our pocket's four and a half, the cut apart's four by six. And I may have to turn those corners a little bit. Oh, so I want, I'm going to go ahead and map mine. It's, oh, he don't need a friend, Christine. He has two other dogs. <laughs> Four and a half by two and a half. He does need a knit little beagle, but that's not till next spring. Four and three eighths by two and three eighths. And then I'm using a directional paper. And I'm actually going to go from the bottom because I want the pie. So I'm going to cut this off and then I'm going to go two and three eighths and I'll go from this end four and three eighths I think these pies are so pretty now keep that that will be a good matting piece and that will sit right there and we'll be using our stickers here in a minute. I'm going to turn it over. I don't want to get a lot of ink on the front. Oh, this cat's not afraid of him because they own two big Great Danes, a black pug, and they have one other dog. So the cat's not a stranger to the dogs. Um, and I think that's why it loves antagonizing Wilbur.
Either that or just likes to listen to him howl, which is kind of funny. I put mine a half inch from the bottom. And I'm just eyeballing that half inch, centering it on the page. I'm going to hold the corners for a moment. Now, I cut the cut apart, so I did cut the gather down. I actually started with the map in the black. I made it four by six, and then I cut this down to three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, and you'll have plenty of room to do that with this cut apart because of the white background. So that's the size of this, and then see it fits right inside that pocket. And then from my sticker sheet, I took um, Beautiful Fall Day. And I filled in that white spot. Not white, but cream bare spot. And then I took this very large floral. And because part of it's sticky, see, it's going to sit like so. Um, a trick I learned from our designer, of course, she uses her sweater. I don't have a fuzzy sweater on. Jennifer, to make part of it unsticky, either uses her paper towel. I don't use powder and because that means I'd have to go to the store and buy something. <laughs> but I, oh, see, it's almost there. It'll pick up the lint that we need it to pick up from your paper towel or fuzzy sweater. There, it's not sticky anymore. And now I can glue it how I'd like. Let's turn it. There we go. So I want part of it sticking up at the top. Now, if you want to go ahead and mat this and fussy cut, you go right ahead. <laughs> I'm not cutting all those angles. There's no way. There we go. And then your cut apart will go inside there. I don't want to push too hard right now. It's not. There we go. Make sure it's dry. Photo can go on the back. Photo can go on the page. And you're all set. Okay, the next page we have those we have two flaps. Let me show them to you. We have the top flap and we have this bottom flap. And we already made our flaps. And it's it's called front of page two. So all we have to do is mat. Mat the two pieces and it's got my and your cut apart will fit inside of here. Not your cut apart, your graphic 45 tag that was made is perfect for that. So I used oops, I used this one, the pumpkin pies that we just used. And then I'm also going to use you'll have some itty bitty acorns. And I used the itty bitty acorns on both of the pockets. And then I left a, um, I have a piece of, I should have a piece of the plaid. There it is that I'll, I used. Okay, so let's get our measurements. So our pocket is now four inches wide. So we're going to be cutting three and seven eighths. But for the bottom pocket, it's going to be 
three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And I'm going to cut that out of the little tiny acorns. And it's called Harvest Crates. Yeah, my dinner goes in the crock pot at 1.30. So my first cut's going to be... I've only measured twice, right? Okay, two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And three and seven eighths. Now for my pocket, just put your ruler in. I put my ruler in one inch. And that tells me I need a four inch piece. Oh yeah, that's the top. Four inches in. Three and seven eight three and seven eighths wide. And that's what the front will look like. Now the back, we'll get to that. I did a solid piece on the back of each one of those. It's the exact same. So we'll, we'll grab that now. So I used the back side. And the full length of your pocket is six. So it's going to be three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So let's cut three and seven eighths first. I'll do it for my big cutter. And then you'll cut it at five and seven eighths and get two pieces. So just like so, cut that small piece first. everything inked and put on our our flat piece and this will be my back piece start with the back. What do I do with that paper towel? to the top. It's not going to. I should have cut a little more off and moved my paper up from that header, but it's a good place to put a sticker if you want. I don't know. I didn't put any. Yes, I did. 
I put a gather sticker, but at the top. Okay, that one's done. This one is the one that sits underneath. And for this one, I did the same color on the back. And for the front, again, I used the acorns. And that plaid piece. They can't get a hold of them. Okay, our width, four and a half. So I want a two piece, two inch piece, but I'm gonna, going to first cut my width, which is four and three eighths and two inch. So your bottom pocket is going to be three and seven eighths by four and three eighths wide. So from the little acorns again, and cut four and three eighths, and then your three and seven eighths. But this um, does sit the opposite direction of that first one we put on, where it sat this way. I mean, you can change your orientation, but this will be this way. This will go on the inside. And then the full size of our pocket is four and three eight or four and three fourths by four and a half. So I need to cut another red piece to fit the back that is four and five eighths, which I'll cut first on this one. Well, I can still cut my four and three eighths. Yeah, I'll cut four and three eighths first. So it's the smaller. And then I'll cut the four and five eighths. And I basically just wanted a neutral background. You know, something that a picture could sit in and it wouldn't get lost in all the, um, what do you call it, guys? <laughs> Um, this piece we're going to be using on the back of the page. It did, I didn't want it to get lost in all the um, busyness of the paper when I put a picture down. Sometimes that will happen. So I went more with one that wasn't quite so busy. And then my piece that's going on the inside of the pocket. So it goes, the flap's going to be at the bottom of our page. So just making sure your orientation is correct for your papers. Now on this bottom flap, when it's on the page, you're not going to want to have a lot of um, decoration. I'd put a flat picture, but this sits on top. So it'll just depend on you know, on what you want on your book, but I wouldn't add any chipboards only because this may not sit flush on top the way you want it. Pop open your pocket a little bit so you can slide that down in. And let's grab our book so we can put these down. And then we'll cut our matting 
and that will be it for the front of page two um decide where you want this because what happens is you have to put one down and then the other and you can also stagger them totally up to you now i've got mine so the bottom is just an i mean the right hand flap is just an eighth of an inch above this bottom one and that's how it will sit so i'm going to put the bottom on first i'm going to put the top on first i mean the right hand side on first and leave that space at the bottom of about an eighth of an inch hi pamela oh you're gonna love this so i'm gonna do about an eighth of an inch at the bottom now my hands are cold i've got the window open yep that's utah can't decide if it's going to be chilly or not This, you don't even have to put it that close, but you want to make sure it's at the bottom or you'll have problems with your matting. Um, I scooted mine over again, so it's about an eighth of an inch away. Don't butt this up or it's not going to close. Don't butt it up to where it folds. You do want it to sit about an eighth of an inch from this closure or you can even bring it into the center however you like i know so mine's going to be a quarter of an inch from the score line and i did not miter these edges because it's going to sit more or less in the center of the page and it is at the bottom here I'm too far left the only real placement you have to worry about like I said is that it's not too close to the fold make sure that's down reburnish and now we can map the inside of the page now, see, everything is held nice and tight when you go to tie it. And this isn't going to lay perfectly flat. Um, it's not made to. Um, but that's why you don't have to use any closures. Now, if you wanted, I mean, you could, but I didn't because there's no sense in it. Now we want to mat. And our page, again, is the 5 inches by 8. And I did use this piece. I'm just going to cut four and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths, and then I'll probably have to trim it. And the reason you want everything to be able to close without Oh, I might not have to trim it. So four and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths is just fine. But it's always better to check your fit before you glue it down. And I agree, Pamela. What more could they're both fabulous papers, but in reality, this is plenty of space because I went through, I can get 15 to 20 photos. Um, because I don't keep my photos all four by six or three by five, I cut them to fit what I want, and so I can get 15 to 20 on each section. And for Halloween and you know, outside fall pictures of the trees and, and fun things like that. That's 
20. Oh, and then I hadn't even counted if you use the graphic 45 tags, because you can put two photos, one on each side. So there's six more if you have tags. Or you may just make your cardstock tags to fit in. You can do it either way. Now on the front, I did use a sticker and from the sticker sheet, I did the same thing that we just did. I de you know, used my paper towel. I took off gather. Defuzzed it. Sometimes you got to clean the fuzz off. Okay. And then you can go back through, make tags, put anything you want inside of these pockets. So we're going to do the back side. Now your back side, I just did a full, I just covered the back. And I used the orange side just for photos. So four and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. One other reason, if you start really bulking up a, your pages like this that are like on a flat hinge like this, um, it's going to be very alligatored and you want to be able to get your photos, you know, inside of there. And folios are going to kind of bunch up anyway. I know I'm covering these beautiful pumpkins, but I want the orange side for pictures. Yes, Diane, you can put a magnet on any one of these pages you like. But you do have to remember, and that's where I started. I'll show you in a minute. Putting a magnet... What am I using that tea fuzzing cloth and then throwing it away? Oh, there it is. Um, I'm going to show you though. I, I just don't want you to waste your magnet, but it's up to you. Uh, I did try. I did actually have a magnet on there before, and then when I started putting my tags in here, and I always simulate kind of a photo, and when then a photo would be on the front and the back and then the magnet lost its grip if you're using cartabella it's so thick so that is one thing to consider but if you want a magnet on the front of the pocket and here don't put it on the base of your page put it on the front of this magnet and the front here so it will keep those two closed together and that was my mistake the original one i put here and then when you put this in and you put a photo here and a photo here, it no longer sticks. But this is definitely a cute album for these. And a G45 tag goes in there. Holds it. I think it holds it just fine. I need to finish here with my page okay if you remember this little guy this is the one we made and it has the two two flaps you want to be gentle we have the two flaps so this is where our pumpkin we get to use our pumpkin we get to use our pumpkin pie and this pumpkin that we just cut so now I am going to go ahead, I'll cut my four and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths because this is going to go on that full page. Oh, but let me cut the four and seven eighths so that you have this whole strip. Of course, we won't put that down. Our flaps have to go down first. 
So on the front of my flaps, and I'm going to have the green on the back. On the front, I used a pumpkin pie from the pumpkin pie sheet. And then I used from the leaves. And it is a smaller leaf. So let, me, let me find it. This one has so many different leaves. It's this small one here with the plaid. So I used the leaves at the top. Hi, Annette. Pumpkin pie at the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our measurements. So we, this is all one piece, so be careful with it. So four and seven eighths. And we're going to do three and seven eighths. Four and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So check and make sure you're going the right direction with your pies. will be the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces out of the green for the back leaves on the top ready to put it all together after we ink our edges. Okay, I gotta close my window. I'm freezing. But it was open because Wilbur I had to yell at him. Oh, <laughs> well, um, you need to right now think of snow and think. Oh, you guys had your Thanksgiving. That's right. Well, it's cold, but you know, it's going to get back up in the 60s for us this weekend. So this is just a quick cold front that probably did come over from up in Washington and Canada through Utah to Colorado, and then it's going to warm up here. For those of you, if you're just joining us and you're making this bolio, so we're going to, we're, we'll have the fall side done, but we'll be doing the Halloween side Saturday. And we will be doing the cover Saturday. There's no way we can keep going today because it will go into hours Okay, hinge to the right, and I'm going to put my pumpkin pie at the bottom. You can also, uh, you know, change what you use on yours. For me, the last page on this album is pretty much dedicated to Thanksgiving. So I, I kind of, if my mind broke down what I'm putting in mine, you know, with the start of fall where we started um, sunflowers and things like that blooming. Then I'll kind of move through the pages to the Thanksgiving. And I've gotten really good at sorting through my photos. I used to think I had to have every single picture in every single book, but I've really gotten good at deciding on which ones are the best. You know, that I really want to focus on. And be careful of your hinges till we put them down. Well, see, that's what I mean. Of course, if they tore, we could still put them down, but I'd prefer they don't. Green on the back, or you can use a green and an orange. Whoops. Oh, I cut, I cut those too big. 
It did. Quickly cut that down. didn't check my fret fit first that was the problem and now we can grab the page And I'm going to turn it sideways to add my flaps that we made last week. And hold them both together as you're adding the adhesive. Paper is so pretty. And the pumpkins that we've already pre cut to four and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths right on top. Close your flaps and then I did use a chipboard Fall off the chair and um, let me use the truck for this one and you may notice like I said in the beginning mine I think it grabbed the wrong chipboards Well, on this project, I used, but you can, you can use this paper on both sides. I do have the Halloween, and I'll show you on that. We'll do that Saturday morning. So I'm going to put my truck, so there's no adhesive on the back. Um, I'm actually going to stick it down to the pumpkin pie. And you just want to adhe add adhesive a little bit to the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is it seems to be holding the top down better. And it's just because that heaviness is what, you know, kind of keeps you can push it together or like so. And where these don't have the sticky, um, you can go back and add your pattern paper to it and then cut around it if you want and there's that page but you can either open them separate but that holds it down the back of our page oh did i not measure my flaps i didn't mine are a little long i should have checked that before i put them down so if you're not matting with me um 
I didn't check the length of it. I should have. Um, you might need to cut your flaps a little bit more or oh, maybe I didn't put it to the edge. Check your flaps first. I didn't do that fitting check like I usually do. So I'm going to open that. Mine are hitting. Should have checked. So I'll open it like so for now. Now the back. So I took what was left. We're going to take um, your scraps. So let me get into here. You've got a couple of different scraps left. And then you will have these two sheets um, left. And I'm actually, I need to check something. What did we use on the cover? I usually check that first. This is our cover sheet. So put this aside. Don't use this unless you want to, of course, because it's going to be on the cover. So for this this last page I did you can do it full but I'm going to do half of it not half of it I did about three quarters with an inch at the bottom now we're kind of messy here I'm just finding the piece left for the bottom which was the plaid there we go so I am going to use basically this full width and it comes out to be two and an, two and three eighths. And sometimes I do that. It just looks like it's going to be great. I'm going to use that and then I'll put the floral at the top or you can make this smaller if you want. I'm going to leave it the full width and I'm going to cut it down to four and seven eighths. This is also another reason I do not make albums even I, twice the same. It's just too difficult because <laughs> you just sometimes cut a piece right or wrong and then you just have that a different variance. But that's okay. Then you have two different looking albums. Four and seven eighths. And I'll give you a length here in a minute. So whatever you're deciding to put at the bottom, the size of your plaid, then you'll just need to have the rest of it to be the floral. I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges. Now, when you're doing the walkthrough, you're going to see, I, I believe I used more of the acorn and the leaves, but I don't know where that piece went. And I really like the floral next to this orange. Are your flaps good? Oh, mine. Yeah, mine extend over. I may do something I've never done. But then they don't want to stay. Now, I will work those. I'll, I'll probably even trim them. We'll see. Now. Looks like I have five and a half. So four and seven eighths by five and a half is my length. And that will go at the top. Great, great, great place for pictures. Well, I timed that just right. It is one o'clock and we are basically done, but I want to show you a couple of things. 
and that will sit just fine it's turning it so we're fine there um, inside in between the pages now I took I want to see what I put on the hinge of oh, this black and white piece that I have left is what I used here on the spine and I'm going to go ahead and cut that so that I don't use it anywhere else so we've got a nine and then our spine was one and a half so I'm going to cut this at eight and seven eighths by one and a half I keep it um, the same width as my spine I think this was already eight and seven eighths Nope. Um, Bobby, this is the fall. Hello, fall. So that, now the reason I went with the black is then it's going to tie in the Halloween. For your little spaces in between here, then I, of course, I'm going to use the fall paper and you have plenty of scraps. And then we're going to create we're going to fill those in and it's going to be seven and seven eighths by three eighths and you're going to want two pieces and it just depends on what you want to use what you have left what you think looks good I had used on mine and remember you're going to need this piece for the cover I'm trying to you still have that piece of black if you want to go in the centers. But I took a piece off of this at 3 8 of an inch. So I used two different ones. So there's 3 8 And it looks like we're going to use... I always just take this from my scraps. Here we go. And I took a red one. The lengths aren't right. I'm just cutting these and laying them down to show you. Let's put the leaves there. Sometimes I'll do them all the same color, but not this time. And those will go there then on this little spine piece right here again I just took I took a actually it was a leaf at that time but if you want to blend it in with the black so that your spines all match you'll have this black piece and that you can go ahead and go through the pumpkin piece would look great um, this one is half inch and I believe let's cut it the full half inch. And you do want the full half inch. It'll fit just fine on there. Like I said, the other one in the original book was from leaves. I think I'll go with this back side. So let me grab the original album and show you. So I used a leaf piece there. The red, another leaf. It just takes you a little bit of scraps. Black and white there. And then we will save that orange piece. Remember I showed you. And then we're going to put another 
uh, piece that will go down with it. You can do if you want two colors there. If you want some of those showing. So you need to pick what you want and just kind of set those aside. Then I'll be using the leaves. And you do have another, this full sheet, but it's your cut apart. So you've got that. And then also you want to keep, oops. this piece for your front cover and we'll have it it'll kind of be pieced on here but then there'll be a, a border strip through the bottom so you don't even notice it and it'll actually go through and then we'll put that on and then we'll have a Halloween on the back and that's see I have a strip here but I'm going to do it the long way instead and that is that's our fall side so we've got our fall side done and then saturday so we'll move on and we'll do the right hand side which is this halloween side or you can stop this video when it's recorded and you'll see the different uh, papers i used or of course you can do your own oh that one's completely off you can do your own decorating however you want to mat but I will be back Saturday morning, 11 a.m. my time, and we will just finish this right-hand side. Thanks, everybody, and happy Friday, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, and we'll finish the Halloween side. Whoops, and everything's falling. <laughs> Can't believe it's 1 o'clock. Uh, well, well, hopefully I'll see you pop in tomorrow, Renee. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. Bye-bye.